the black girl who became a millionaire at age 12. Sarah Rector was the richest black girl in America. She was born in an all-black town Taft in 1902. It was also part of Indian Territory. Her parents were listed as freedmen on the Dawes Rolls. They received land as a part of the Treaty of 1866. Under this treaty, women were also granted land. At the age of 12, Sarah had 159.14 acres of land, but the family could not afford the annual $30 property tax, and the land couldn't be farmed in any way. So Sarah's father leased it out to an oil company. In 1913, the first well was drilled on the property. It brought 2,500 barrels of oil in a single day. Sarah's cut per day was $300. It would be about $8,000 today. Newspapers sensationalized the story. She was sent gifts, requests for loans, and marriage proposals. The Oklahoma legislature even tried to have her declared white. One article claimed that Sarah was sleeping on the floor. She allegedly was only given a few dollars a month. The truth was that her parents received money monthly. They had a new five-room home being built, but the NAACP was concerned. They advised the rectors to send Sarah to the children's home. It was a boarding school at the Tuskegee Institute. Sarah would later attend the institute itself. Her mother insisted that older sister Becky go along. They left for Alabama for better schooling, but the newspapers reported that they were living in a tent. By the time Sarah left school, she was a millionaire. Her family moved to Kansas City. They bought a brick mansion on 12th Street. Today people know it as the Sarah Rector Mansion. They purchased the entire frontage of 12th Street. They rented it out for additional income. Sarah owned some businesses, stocks, and bonds. She was riding first class on trains. African Americans couldn't shop alongside white people, so stores would close down to allow Sarah to shop freely. Sarah owned Cadillacs, Lincolns, and a Rolls-Royce limo. Several speeding tickets were issued to her and her mother. Sarah was cocky with the officers who pulled her over. She would turn to them and say, Don't you know who I am? Sarah purchased several homes on Lockridge. There she threw lavish parties. She invited people like Duke Ellington and Count Basie. Sarah married Kenneth Campbell in 1920. She had three sons with him. The couple divorced in 1934. Sarah remarried restaurant owner William Crawford. After the stock market crash, Sarah still had money, but she couldn't throw it around like she had before. Her siblings all took on jobs. Her mother went back to working as a maid for a time. Sarah's mansion was purchased by the Atkins Funeral Home. Then it became C.K. Kerford Funeral Home. It was later used as offices, but it's now vacant. In her last years, Sarah lived a relatively quiet life. She passed away in 1967 from a cerebral hemorrhage. Her body was brought to C.K. Kerford Funeral Home. She was buried in the cemetery in her hometown of Taft. Her descendants still call Kansas City home.